this sort of act of food design, it's not necessarily something that's been happening forever. Some of the big drastic changes in our food system, um, you know, I, I read a book recently that I told Emma about and she was like, oh, you know, said we've been doing loads of work on this already. It was amazing to me, but it was called the Dorito effect. It was about how kind of flavour is being applied to food. It's actually quite recent technology in the history of food. And so in many ways, being able to think about our food as being designed is something we've done quite recently in terms of shifting our food system. What role does... Um, circular economy or circular design play in redesigning our food? Yeah, I think that's that's where it becomes very interesting, uh, that if we want to create positive consumer, economic, farmer, environmental outcomes, you can combine food design with the principles of circular economy, and that is circular design for food. And what it's about is it's about rethinking product concepts, rethinking the ingredient selection, the sourcing, packaging, so that we can create products that are nature positive. And what we found in this study is that if we combine four opportunities around ingredient selection and sourcing, that can unlock amazing benefits when it comes to the environment, economics, and yield. And these four opportunities are using diverse, lower impact, upcycled and regeneratively produced ingredients. And um, there's something uh, sort of, we, we've talked a bit about food design and circular design of food. I guess the, the, when you mention those four um, kind of opportunities, there's something intuitive to me that, you know, I can think of examples of upcycled ingredients that already exist in the system that might show what's kind of possible feels like there's something about the combination of those things that is crucial here. It's a redesign, a transformation of the system beyond kind of just individual decisions. Is that right? Am I kind of hitting on the right note there? Yeah, exactly. I think each of these opportunities have amazing benefits in itself. So for example, diverse ingredients, you know, we all know that biodiversity, genetic diversity is very important and we need more. As, as Emma was mentioning, we only 60% of our calories come from four crops and they are thousands, hundreds of thousands of crops available out there. So uh, there's a huge opportunity for businesses to incorporate a much broader range of ingredients in their products. Uh, so for example, like we're using a lot of sugar cane and sugar beets to produce sugar, but there's also date, coconut, monk fruit, stevia. There are many options that we could use for sweetener or, you know, how exciting would it be to try new varieties of potatoes or perennial wheat? Uh, and all of these diversity brings a lot of resilience to the food system. So if there are shocks like drought or pests, um, with biodiversity, we're going to be able to reach a higher level of resilience. Um, if I go to... Oh, yeah, go for it. No, no, please carry on. <laughs> the... Um, so another benefit, so if you go to the, the second opportunity, which is lower impact ingredients. So it's inherently saying that some ingredients have the potential to have um, a lower environmental impact than others. Uh, and, you know, a lot of businesses are already exploring the opportunity, for example, of switching from um, conventionally produced animal proteins to plant proteins. And what we see in the study is that the this opportunity extends um, well beyond diversifying protein source. For example, if we if we want to replace conventional wheat flour with pea flour uh, in a box of breakfast cereals, we can reduce farm level greenhouse emission, greenhouse gas emissions by 40% and farm level biodiversity loss by 5%. So, so each of these um, opportunities have amazing benefits. Uh, but as you said, they are they are the best when combined all together. So they they reach the the best level of um, yields of economics uh, when businesses start redesigning their product portfolio and looking at all of these four opportunities at the same time and thinking how can I combine those to create products that are good for people and good for nature. 